Welcome to Lift Your Legacy. My name is Jacob Rupp, father, husband, and rabbi. And each week, we bring you an inspiring person or message to help you unlock your inner potential and create change that will impact the future. Thank you for listening, and let's get to it. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Your ongoing support means the world to me. Before we jump into our episode today, I wanted to speak about an opportunity that exists. I do personal coaching in the areas of health, mindset, you can call it spirituality, I am a rabbi after all, and relationships and career. So what does it mean to work with a coach? Basically, we would work one-on-one to help you set goals and go after and achieve those goals. And even sometimes the most difficult part is figuring out what kind of goals that you want or what you are looking for in the first place. So if this sounds like something that you could be interested in or know someone that would benefit, thank God I've been able to help quite a few clients over my years and I'd be happy to help you. So please just reach out. Simplest way is through either social media or my email, rabbirupp at gmail.com. And now, our episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to have back on the show my very first repeat guest, Mr. Daniel Geffen, who is a rock star podcaster himself and just came out with his first book, The Self-Help Addict. So today we talk about self-help and the addiction to self-help and what you're looking for for self-help. And maybe he was being nice or maybe he meant it. I think it's probably the second, but he's a nice guy, so it could be both. Uh, But he said he was asked some questions by me that he really isn't asked typically and We will get some unique answers from someone who's read it all and talked to them all about self-help and development. With no further ado, Mr. Daniel Geffen. Daniel Geffen, congratulations on your book. The last time you joined us on the podcast, you said you were going to write the book. You've now written the book. It's now out. It's called The Self-Help Addict. So can you start with your story in terms of when you became addicted to self-help? Oh, my goodness. Um, I think I was always addicted I think I still am addicted, by the way. That, that, that's an important point I want to make. The book is not saying that you won't be addicted to self-help anymore. I think that the way that addictions work is that it's, it's kind of... Some people just have addictive personalities. It's just how it is. And I don't think you can get rid of that, just like you can't necessarily get rid of... Uh, you know. And, and, and I don't think necessarily you want to get rid of it either. I think you can channel addictive personalities in an incredible, incredibly powerful way. Um, so I think I was born with it and I just learned to channel my addictive personality type and used it for me rather than against me, if that makes sense. Um, so when we talk about, you know, addicted to self-help. So for me, it would look like this. I would walk into Barnes and Nobles. Okay. I would just feel like, time just stopped and I could just literally be in there for hours. My wife would be standing at, at the doorway going, no, don't go in, don't go in there. Cause she knew when I go into a bookstore, it's like, it's, oh, she's lost me. Like, okay, go, go with the kids, go shopping, go buy something. Cause I'm going in. Um, and I would go to the self-help section and I'd start piling up books and I just look at you know the front cover and, and look at the back cover and look at the contents and like flick through it and look at testimonials and I was searching for the book you know what I mean like for those of you listening to this you, you, you if you're a self-help addict you'll get me like straight away um, you're looking for that key that 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 one thing that can change your life that's going to change everything and so I would end up like with 10 15 books and then i would probably whittle it down to three and i'd walk out with three of three of the books um and it was always the same thing you know i'd go home and i'd be so excited to like crack open this new book and i'd be reading it and i'd have my my yellow marker pen and i'd I'm, like literally highlight everything the whole book was yellow like you know the whole book is is yellow what's the point of that um and then i'd get right to the end And that was the worst part is the worst part is when you get to the last page and you realize, oh, crap, I've I finished the book. Because what that means is now I've got the responsibility to now go and do something with all that information. See, while I'm reading the book, I'm engaged in information gathering. And if I'm gathering information so I can justify to myself that it's okay, I'm gathering information right now. But the minute I've stopped gathering information, 
I've now got to go and take action. And that scares the hell out of me because as a self-help addict, I'm scared to take action. I'm, I'm scared to go out there and, and produce and do something, you know, that's my own. So you, you would say one of the symptoms of being a self-help addict is someone that naturally is uh, action averse? Yes. Meaning like you, we tend to want to, we want someone else to give us the answer. We want to be told what to do because then I don't have to take the responsibility of, of screwing up. Like then it's not my fault in a way. Um, there's a lot of self doubt that's involved in it. Uh, low self esteem and just fear of failure, fear of fear of what if, what if I make a fool of myself? Um, and so it, it, it basically starts a cycle. So it starts with, let's say a book, um, or it could start with a blog post or a YouTube video. And it usually ends up with, okay, well, I finished the book. Um, let me go to his website. Let's go to the author's website. Oh, he's got a seminar webinar. Let's go sign up to that, you know? And then of course, oh, he's got this big event. I've got to go. And, and it's always, the justification is always, if I just get a little bit more information, then I'll take action. And of course, it never happens because you're always just taking a little bit more information and you hop from one, you know, leader or thought leader or celebrity to the next. And it just, it's a never ending cycle. So in the, in the, I, I know this is about your book, but I want you to know, obviously you have a very successful uh, podcast. Can I pick your brain where you have these interviews with people that are, I think by pretty much every stretch of the imagination, unbelievably successful and in a lot of cases self-made. Do you find that these people, because in my mind, what you're painting the picture of is the self-help people are those that are kind of sitting on the wayside, you know, devouring information and then over here and, and could be not, but do you find that the people that are actually doing are not self-help addicts? They weren't compelled by this desire to consistently consume and they were out just producing from the very beginning? Um, I think that there's, there's different types of personalities. Um, I definitely had people on my show who I think were self-help addicts and then they just, or are self-help addicts, but they just know, like I said, they were able to channel that and, and become who they were. Um, there are some people who are literally just born, you know, with, with, uh, great self-esteem, confidence. Um, they just go out and from a very young age, there's a lot of stories of, of people who, you know, in high school, they were already running businesses and, and, but that's not the case with a lot of people that I've, I've interviewed. There's a lot of people I interviewed who, you know, and only uh, until later on in life, they, they finally started to flourish. Um, I didn't start my business until I was um, about 23. And hopefully, that's not, hopefully that's not later on in life for you. Well, okay, fine. I, listen, I, I guess God sent me the right people um, and I was blessed. And, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really doesn't. I, I, I don't buy into the whole time or age thing. I don't care when you start. Start when you're 23. Start when you're 63. I don't care. Just start. I just get started. I don't care. Whoever's listening to this, I don't care if you're 65 years old. Start now, right? I don't care if you're 15. Start now. Like, it doesn't make a difference how old you are. Is there a feeling of lack, a feeling of negativity that sparks the self-help addiction? Or is there... I guess in your experience, and maybe you can just speak about your personal life, did your self-help ad addiction, so to speak, you said it you know, went on forever, but were you trying to fill something or were you trying to make better something that was already good? Oh, gee, that's a really good question. Um, it's interesting. My book, I almost rewrote my entire book. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> this is really funny. Um, so I've wanted to write the book for 10 years. That's the irony. The irony is, is that the book was in me for 10 years. Like literally, I've been married now. I just celebrated my 11th year anniversary. And I, thank you very much. Uh, I remember being in therapy in my first year, after my first year of marriage, right? For good reasons. Um, and the therapist said to me, you know, what, what, you know, what's one of the things that you want to accomplish? And I said to her, I've, I want to write this book. It's called The Self-Help Addict. Now, this is 10 years ago. And I already had like the whole book in my head. I knew what I wanted to write about. 
and I just kept procrastinating and kept pushing it off. I, I would start it. Like I would go to the park one day and I'd sit there with my notepad and I'd like, I'd, I'd write a whole chapter and I feel so good. I'm like, this is it. I'm doing it this year. I'm publishing it. And of course months would go by and I'd, you know, find it and go like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I remember writing that. Um, so when I finally wrote the book, uh, which was this year, I, uh, well, last year, I should say, um, I looked at things I wrote and I kind of cringed because I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe like that's what I thought. That's what I held. That, that was my opinion, but my opinions changed. Um, and I'll tell you the biggest, for me, the biggest um, switch um, was the idea that you've got to constantly produce and constantly take action and constantly produce. And I came to a, a point in my life where actually that's not enough. And I realized that I lived on a seesaw, a seesaw that pretty much on one side was becoming and becoming and becoming and becoming and climbing and going and, and achieving. And then on the other side of the, of the seesaw was, was being like completely being and accepting who you are and accepting everything you have right now in this moment and that you are perfect no matter what happens you are perfect and there was this dance of like but if i'm perfect then how can i achieve more because then if i get if i feel like i'm perfect and i accept myself then i'm going to become complacent and i'm not going to need to do anything else but i want to do more and i don't want to become complacent and then but if i just go and do and climb the mountain i'm never going to enjoy the view i'm just going to climb and climb and climb and then what there's never going to be an end. There's never going to be a, wow, look at this. Look what I've done. It's just going to be, okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, next. Like, that's not a life. Who wants that? But then you also don't want to be the guy sitting on top of the mountain, humming all day, going, hmm, and just like watching the sunset. Like, I don't want to be that guy either. And so I include, and so I literally, Jacob, I, I had this, I was, Oh, I felt like I was rip I was ripping myself out from the inside because I was about a month away from publishing the book. And I had this sudden realization that, oh my goodness, I have to rewrite the whole book. And so I spoke it over with my mentors and uh and pretty much they said to me, Look, you know, Daniel, why do you have to rewrite the book? What you wrote is a hundred percent true. It's just you found another dimension that needs to be part of the puzzle just just write about that as well like book write a few chapters well no not not yes it, it could be book number two but i i basically added a chapter a few chapters towards the end of the book one of the chapters is called being and becoming which is this whole dance that i talked about um and there's a few chapters about just being and living in the moment and accepting and so I guess the first part of the book, I would say the first 80% is about getting off your and going and making something of yourself and doing something and creating and producing, going from a consumer to a creator. But then the, the last 20% of the book is, yeah, but hold on, that's not the end of it. If you only do that, you will be just as depressed, if not more depressed, because <laughs> it, it's funny because at least now, before you take action, you're thinking, well, if I only take action, then I'll be happy. So you have hope. The problem is, is that if you take action and you achieve in life and then you still don't feel happy, holy crap, you're going to feel so depressed. And that's why celebrities and athletes who have made it, right, financially, they've got, they've got millions in the bank. They can have whatever they want. They've married the goal, the goal of their dreams. They've done everything you can imagine. They've flown around the world. They've got the fame. Those are the ones that usually end up committing suicide and overdosing because they've come to the realization that this is it. I've made it and I still feel like this. And that's why they, that's why they take their lives. Right. So, so I guess the, the question is ultimately if you would advocate how we get into this and what, because again, I think it is a very vicious cycle and like, 
college and everything else, it's a, you know, a massive selling machine because as social media becomes more, you know, powerful, we sort of have access and we can see who has this stuff, who at least looks like they have this stuff. And I had, you know, a, a crazy experience where I was, you know, you get this certain level of jealousy, but then once you see a, a, the bigger component of a person's life, even if you think about it, like, you know, if you would have this guy, even pick, pick your mentor would mean that he's got a different life. So then you don't get, you don't, you know, you don't want the whole package. You just want kind of that one, even you don't want, you wouldn't give up anything except that small area where he is actually, you know, done better than you. And even still, most people would say, you know, Gary V always talks about how he would kind of like to go back and have to win it all over again. So you might even want to have made it like your mentor. So the whole idea of this negative um, pressure that we are inundated with. And I think as you start to climb the self-help chain and you see all these self-help successful authors who are publishing stuff about how to be successful, and they're making all this kind of money. It just is like this very nasty perpetual cycle. So I would wonder if you were starting again, if you were speaking to somebody, do you start by helping them be good with themselves? And then that can kind of fuel an engine of, okay, now that I feel good about myself, I can go out because I owe myself to try something new. Or do you try to actually say, no, you're actually kind of a loser and you're sitting around doing nothing? That's a really good question. Actually, one of the chapters in my book talks about um, idolizing, right? Stop idolizing everyone. Just stop looking at everybody. No one, like, you're not them. They're not you. I, I run, I always say that I have a single race track. I don't compete with anybody. Like, my finish line it has nothing to do with you. You've got your own finish line. Um, the answer to that question would be to really work on both. So you've got to take action because what action will do is it will give you, it will give you that confidence. It will give you that, that self-esteem to keep going. Like the more action you take, the more you'll realize, hey, I, I can do this. When I started my podcast show two and a half years ago, I had no clue what I was doing. Like I was jumping into the deep end. I didn't know what I was like. I didn't have any clue. And the more I produced episodes, the more I started getting feedback from people listening saying, hey, I love your show. And I'm like, really? You actually like my show? Let's, you know, wow, okay, I'll keep doing this, right? Um, and then I started getting big guests, right? And, and then I started getting awards. Like I was awarded the top 26 podcasts to listen to in 2017. I started, you know, getting my download numbers started going up. So I hit 20,000 and 50,000 and 100,000 and 150,000. And it was just crazy. Then I was written in Forbes. And each of these milestones gives you that little bit more confidence to keep going, to keep doing. And it could be anything. I mean, but can, can I just say that you're saying that's a little bit of that. I'm just, and I, I want to be very blunt about this because I had this crazy experience where it didn't end up panning out, but essentially I doubled my income in one day or I thought I was. And I was, I was like, all right, great. And I was so upset because I wanted it to mean more. Is that the same kind of situation? Or are there certain milestones in your career caught with your podcast, caught with your businesses where you could really sit and groove out and be happy for a long time? It's not about sitting and grooving out and being happy. For me, it's just the action itself gets you to take more action. It's like a drug. I mean, this is a, 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 action at the end of the day. What it does for you is it motivates you to take the next step. You know, one of the chapters I talk about is we all have feelings. Okay. I don't feel like getting up in the morning, I don't feel like going to the gym. Um, I talked about a story where one day, and for, for those of you who are parents or dads listening to this, you'll, you'll really relate to this. Um, you know, I was sitting in the park uh, on a Sunday. My kids were, you know, playing on, on some sort of a pirate ship that they had there. And I was kind of just sitting there on my phone. You know, my wife was sitting next to me and she turns around. And she says, like, why don't you go play with them? You're like, what? And I was, I'm huh? working. You're like, what? I'm working. Uh, you know what? <laughs> The truth is, is I wasn't even working. I was just being on my, I know. right. I was just being on my phone because I couldn't be bothered. I didn't feel like getting up and going. Like, you know, it was, it was whatever. It was a cold day and I just wanted to sit there. I just wasn't in the mood. I wasn't in the mood. I didn't want to go and run around. Right. And my wife like gave me this look, like, come on. And I, and I sat there and I thought about it and I was like, oh man, I really don't want to. And then I just, I just took the action. I just got up. And I walked towards the pirate ship and I climbed on the pirate ship and I started 
pretending to be a pirate. I'm like, come here, I'm going to get you, you know. And my two little boys were like running around and they got so excited and they started like trying to pull me off and push me off. And the next thing I know, I'm just like wrestling with my two boys and we're having such a great time. And like an hour goes by and we, we, we finish, we're walking home like, and I felt so good. I felt so good. And I remember thinking to myself, like, like, how did that happen? I went from just sitting there, not feeling like moving, not, I didn't want to do anything. And all I did was I just, just took one small action. I just got up and I just took the motions. I just went through the motions. I went, and I was so glad I did that. And I feel like that happens in every single, like, aspect of my life when I, when I don't want to work, you know, when you just can't be bothered going to the office, you're like, Oh man, I got to switch on the computer. Oh no, I don't want to deal with it. But then it's something magical happens when you just open up your computer and you just start typing and you start suddenly like, boom, you're like in the zone and like hours go by and you're just like, Whoa, you're, you're, you're in that. And the same, like I go to the gym. I hate going to the gym. I hate it with a passion. Right. But like, and every time I have to literally like pull myself to the gym, but the minute that I start lifting weights, the minute I start running any type of motion, I just, I'm in it. And I'm so glad that I did it. Like I go home afterwards feeling pumped, feeling good. And like, I always say, thank God, I just, I just push myself. And so this is going back to your question, like, you know, if you take action, the feelings will follow. That's the key. Don't let your feelings take control. If you take actions, the feelings will follow along. So Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Um, therefore, if, I guess you're suggesting that the goal is not to cure a self-help addiction, um, but rather to learn how to channel said self-help addiction. You know what, Jacob, in a way, if you think about what is a self-help addiction, it, it comes down to curiosity. We're curious. We want to know. We want to, we want to understand. We want to learn. We want to grow, right? But if you just leave curiosity as curiosity, then nothing happens. If you, but if you channel that curiosity, it's, it's incredible what you can achieve. Like I, I talk about, for example, being children, like I, I, I tell everyone, go back to your, ch to your, to your childhood, go back to your, when you were a toddler. Cause pe some people might say, I just don't have it in me, but I'll call you out on that because when you were, you know, two years old, one years old, right. And you saw something that you liked, you went for it. You, you tried, you experimented, you know, when you tried to walk, for example, you got up, you fell down, you, you bruised yourself right? What did you do? Did you give up? No, you got back up again and you tried again and you tried again and you tried again until, until you did it. So you were once a person who was resilient. You were persistent. You were stubborn. You didn't quit. You didn't give up until you got what you wanted. My question and my challenge to those people to anyone who says, well, I'm not a persistent person or I'm not really like, is what happened to you? Because you were, we all were, right? Imagine trying to learn a new language. Imagine trying to learn Mandarin right now. You break your teeth, right? It'll be so hard. But hey, do you know what? You learn a language. Whatever language you speak, that's the language you learn. And you, boy, were you breaking your teeth, right? Gugu, gaga, abba, abba, baba. My, my kid now is, is one, okay? All he says all day is baba. Baba. Baba means bottle. Baba means pacifier. Baba means food. Baba means I just took a dump. Baba means bed. Baba means everything, right? He's, he's not, he needs to learn the words. He needs to put the words together. So you stumbled upon those words and then you started making sense. Were you embarrassed that people are going to laugh at you? No, you didn't have any shame. You didn't give a damn what, every, what anyone thought and you never gave up, even if it hurt. So you uh, well, want someone like that. Why, what happened? What happened to you? Well, the interesting thing is, I think what you're suggesting is that the desires that we have as children are, are um, external. And as we get older, these desires, these needs are, are, I guess, kind of more internal. And so it's more about 
being thinking about I'm a failure, like identifying yourself with the failure as opposed to saying I failed this time. And but it, it has nothing to do with me. And I and I think that's kind of the the shift it sounds like that you're you're suggesting that if a person believes in themselves and has enough self-confidence, which you know comes from taking action or comes from learning how to be as opposed to become, um, then they can much easier associate the the natural downfalls that happen to a person in the course of business and life and mistakes and not have it be crippling. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's really a mix between mental and, and, and action taking. Like it's, it's, but I, I really do believe that the action taking will get you there faster. I, then, and I think it's working on your mental game. Yeah, I do. I really believe that. And you've seen that with the successful guests that you've interviewed? Yeah, a hundred percent. They're all action takers. I had a billionaire on my show, okay, uh, two months ago. Um, Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Hoffman. That's great. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, one of only two thousand billionaires in the entire world. Okay, and I said to him, I said, Jeff, what, what is it? Go on, tell me, what is it? You're a billionaire. I mean, you've you, not many billionaires out there. What's your secret? And he said to me, Daniel, I have a, a, a sign up in my office and it says the following. Ideas are welcome here, but execution is worshipped. And that's, that was his message. His message was, you, the ideas are cheap. People have ideas all the time, right? Everybody says, oh my goodness, Uber, I thought of that. Yeah, great, but you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's such a great idea. I thought of that. Yeah, well, but you're not making money because you didn't take action on it. Final question for you. Um, as you have accomplished all of these different things, and I, I watch your Facebook statuses and you put up what you do during the week and you put up what you did over the year, and it's, it's very impressive. Thank do you. you feel like you're still compelled to go forward in the sense that, and, and it's, I'm, I'm asking a specific question because I listened to a, on a certain podcast, there's two people they were speaking, both, both you know, phenomenally successful. And they both said they still are essentially motivated by that, that, um, that need to prove other people. You know, now obviously they've, they've, they've done it and everything like that, but there's still like a certain level of, I have to do this. And if I would, you know, that concept, do you still, do you have that? Do, do you find yourself kind of coming into a greater appreciation just all the time and you're just happier and happier and more appreciative or are you finding that as you keep seeing what your capacity is that you are sort of still your your, your hunger becomes greater both both on the one hand i still crave attention i i i'm i'm an attention craver i i love attention um, but on the other hand i also appreciate who i am and i realize and recognize i don't need your attention meaning i like it i don't need it there's a big there's a massive difference what would you say you need i like chocolate i don't need it what what do i need fulfillment in life which comes really just from being the best i honestly th believe i can be um and deepening my relationships which which matter most which primarily would be my wife, my children, and my creator. And then, of course, my extended family, which is, you know, my friends and... Your in-laws. <laughs> Sorry? Your in-laws. In-laws, they are still working. Um, that's a work in progress, absolutely. Right. <laughs> um, okay, great. Daniel, how do we find out more about your book? Where do we get it? And um, well, what do we do? So what I understand is that this is actually um, going live on the day of my book launch. So if you're listening to this um, on the 16th of January, then um, my book launch is today. And my goal is to get to number one bestseller. And it would be a massive, massive um, for, for if you could buy a copy or, or buy a couple of copies um, on Amazon. So if you just go over to Amazon and type in The Self-Help Addict, you'll find the book. Also, I'm sure uh, Jacob will have a link in the show notes. Yep. So uh, if you could uh, uh, buy a copy of the book, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so please do send me feedback. And again, 
Jacob will have a link of my all my contact details in the show notes as well. Um, and if you could leave a review on Amazon, that would be a huge help. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's great talking to you, Daniel. Jacob, always, thank you so much. Now, before you take off, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to bring up something that is very important to me. And if you feel like you're getting value from this, there's a couple of ways that I would ask for you to, I guess you could say pay it forward or pay it back. Paying it forward would be letting your friends know about it, sharing it in Facebook groups, sharing it on your Facebook page. You know, I have such an unbelievable honor to be the person who's speaking to all of these inspiring people. But like, I already enjoyed it. I got the value because I talked to them and you got the value because you listened to them. But shouldn't you, couldn't you share it with other people? That's, that's the first thing. The second thing would be to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and to do a review, which is pretty simple. Uh, the reason why that's helpful is it bumps up our rating so that more people can find us. And the third slash fourth thing that you could do is that if you feel that you would like to sponsor a podcast and you would like to advertise on the podcast, that would be fantastic. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Or if you would just like to donate towards the podcast to be able to support the staff over here who are working very, very hard and I appreciate their help so much. I couldn't be anywhere without my team. Uh, please donate. Uh, we have a PayPal set up and that's just my email for everything. RabbiRupp at gmail.com and you can just make a note that it is for the podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we are excited to speak to you again soon. There you have it, folks, another inspiring episode. If you enjoyed this, I ask you to please share this with your friends and to like us over on Rabbi Rupp through Facebook or on YouTube. And the more that we're able to get these important messages out, the more that we can really make an impact in the world. So I encourage you, please, to stay tuned. Uh, we have a ton of amazing speakers coming up and also to tell your friends about it. Thank you very much.